article, let's go ahead and get started. So yesterday, we read an article about the Exxon Valdez oil spill. So we're gonna use that to discuss what we've been discussing about matter. So who wants to tell us about the article? Yes. During the oil spill, the wildlife ecosystem was affected and it didn't run the same until like everything was back on track, like the oil was pretty much gone. What were some of the effects on the environment from the oil spill? Yes. Millions of sea life and died and it disrupted their ecosystem. Oh, good. So what were some of the animals that were affected? Yes. Otters, seals, and birds, and billions of eggs that were planted there. So how did they attempt to clean it up? Uh, let me get to my head from, from, yes. Skimming. So what is skimming? When they skimmed it, they did what? They tried to get some of the oil off the surface using machines. They tried to scoop some of the oil up and put it off to the side. Okay, what else did they do? Yes. They tried to use chemicals. All right, so basically they took those chemicals, poured it in, so the oil would do what? So it would spread out. The, the misconception for most people is that because oil feels slippery and thick, that during oil spills it would sink. And I, I knew that, so I decided, well, let's take that and let's, let's take that opportunity to talk about density uh, so they can learn that even though liquids can have the same amount uh, in volume, it doesn't necessarily mean they have the same density. Here's a view from the sky of the oil spill. What do you notice? Raise your hand. What do you notice? Uh, yes? I noticed that the oil is close up to there. It's like far away. Okay. What else do you notice? Yes. I noticed that the oil is separated from the water. Hey, the oil is separate from the water. All right, so here's a question for you. Now, I want you to think about, and this is going to lead us into our lesson today. So the question is, why did the oil float instead of sink? I want you to talk it over with your group for a minute. Uh, then I'm going to give you a sticky note, and I want you to write your response on the sticky note, place it on the poster that matches the color on your desk. So I wanted to make sure I got a response from everybody. Uh, some of the people maybe didn't want their responses read out loud, but it's important to me to know where they were uh, at this point in the lesson so I can know what to say, what to do. Had to know what they already understood before we moved on. Alright, so today we're going to conduct an investigation that will assist us with answering this question. And when we get through, we should have a better understanding about how matter is characterized about the particles that are in it. So when I say particles, what am I talking about? It's the molecules and the atoms. Okay, let's keep going. All right, so when we get finished, we should have a better understanding about, what's the first one? Density and how different liquids have different levels of density. All right, what's next? What happens when those liquids come in contact with each other? All right, what's the next one? Use that information to explain the dynamics on the spill. All right, and the last one is? Okay, so I'm gonna give you four different liquids, water, corn syrup, vegetable oil, and liquid hand soap. On the papers that you have, where it says prediction, I want you to write your predictions in the blanks provided below, and then remember that if you think a liquid has more density than the other, where does it go? In the chart, at the, at the bottom. The one you think has the least amount of density goes where? At the top, and the other two go where? In between somewhere. All right, so we've got, again, we know what vegetable oil is. Anybody in here cook? You ever use vegetable oil? Yes. All right, so I put a little food coloring with it to give it some color. Anybody here wash their hands? Yes. Yeah, everybody, right? All right, here's some liquid soap. Anybody here eat corn, use corn syrup on anything? Maybe sometimes, so this is corn syrup. All right. So give it a little effect. This is water. Raise your hand if you drink water. Everybody, right? I know. So think about your experience with those four things and decide which order you think they're going to go in. And then write down why you think they're going to go in that order. Go ahead and do that now. So what I did, I took four things that uh, just about all of them probably have in their homes uh, corn syrup, vegetable oil, water and liquid soap. So I wanted to take those four things. Uh, most of them had come in contact with it, touched it, had a chance to fill it, 
and I wanted to use those four things to teach density and the fact that liquids, although they can be the same amount, can have different amounts of density. And so what I wanted them to do was to see when they try to mix them together, uh, they don't really, you know, they, uh, the ones that they thought might be the thickest or have the most density didn't necessarily have the most density. So this experiment gave them a chance to see that in real time. What's this? Water. No, Blue. this. Oh, it's corn, corn syrup. syrup. What's and that? So, what's that? Water. Water. Vegetable. Vegetable. That's right. Well, I thought water was less density. That's why we did it. So, which one has less density? Water or vegetable oil? Vegetable oil. By a show of hands, whose, whose results were different than what you predicted? Okay. Cool. All right. Look this way. So we're going to go ahead now. Let's move on. We're going to calculate the density. Now, the way it turned out was because of the amount of what? Density. There's a number for density that we need to know how to calculate. Now, what did I tell you? How much liquid did I put in each bottle? 100 milliliters. So 100 milliliters is going to be the what? Volume. Now. So with density, if you know the mass and you know the volume, you take the mass divided by the volume, you have a number that represents density. When you do, when you do your math and you come up with the answers, don't you think? The, an the numbers should match what? The results. The results. The numbers should match the results. In other words, when you said corn syrup had the most density, when you do your numbers, which number is probably going to be the highest? Corn syrup. Corn syrup. Corn. All right. Well, they're going to remember the majority of what they do. Very little of what I say. I can say a lot, but if I don't let them do it, then it's going it's to go right over their head. So it's important to me that they get a chance to do what we talk about. So we do a lot of hands-on experiments. The amount of results we got from the experiment and the calculations for the density have given us the hypothesis that the more density the substance has, the more it goes to the bottom. Corn syrup has 1 in 3,300 hundredths amounts of density and it sank to the bottom. Liquid soap, 1 in 600 amounts of density and it went just on top of the corn syrup water. Water has one amount of density and it went on top of the liquid soap. Vegetable oil has 9,200 amounts of density and went on top of the water. We think this information proves our result hypothesis correct. So at first, we were just kind of guessing or using what we already knew about uh, oil to predict why we thought oil floated on top of water during oil spills. All right, did what we did today, did that kind of help us clarify why oil floats on top of water? Yes. yes. Why does oil during an oil spill float on top of the water? Because of the, of the density amount. Because of the density amounts. So even without knowing the density of, of crude oil that comes out of the ground, we already know what? Water is denser than oil. We already know that water is denser than oil. What I'd like for them to take away from this lesson uh, is that matters everywhere, uh, but not all matter is the same.